All right, thank you. And uh, I hope everyone had a good lunch. Good food, interesting conversations. Luckily, not interesting food. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome back to our sessions. Uh, our first speaker is Pallavi Patil. Uh, she's with Yelp, uh, works on the as a tech lead on the search quality team. And uh, I really find interesting what you wrote in your short bio. Uh, so uh, she builds back-end solutions that powers UX features uh, on search result page. That sounds super interesting. So please welcome um, Palavi. So yeah, I've been in this space for over five years now at Yelp, where I've primarily worked on user-facing solutions in the relevant space. And I'm actually going to be talking about one of those uh, problem areas today, specifically relevance proof in Yelp search with a focus on LLM-powered annotations. So this is kind of the agenda that you'll see throughout uh, the rest of the talk. In a minute, I'll get started by setting some context on Yelp search and what annotations even are. And then we'll spend most of the talk talking about um, LLM expansions and how we've leveraged them for a couple of annotations. And then finally, towards the end, I'll talk about the future of annotations a little bit and also a little bit about how we've leveraged the annotation system for RAG. So to get things started, what is Yelp? Uh, this is a screenshot of one of Yelp's pages on web. So kind of in one sentence, Yelp connects people with great local businesses. Uh, so businesses can jump onto Yelp and have their own pages on Yelp where they provide information about themselves. So what, what's on their menu? What services do they offer? What are their open hours? What kinds of payments do they accept? And then users, when they either visit these businesses or use their services, can write reviews for the business. And so what Yelp Search does is connect users of Yelp with those businesses that they're looking for. So we want to find whatever businesses satisfy your search query, which is what you're going to type in when you jump onto Yelp and sort of open this search view up. You might be looking for a new restaurant if you want to try some new food, in which case your search results might look something like this page in the middle over here. Or maybe you're having some plumbing issue at home you know, and you need a plumber. So you come on to search type plumbers and you see something that looks slightly different, more specific to your intent. So just to uh, set some quick context, I'm sure most of you know this term already, but I'm going to be saying the word SERP a lot. So SERP stands for Search Engine Results Page. So when you run a search, businesses are retrieved and ranked based on the query that you've run and then they're displayed to you on the SERP, right? So let's say you ran a search like Korean corn dogs in the image over here. You might see some results that look like this. For the sake of this example, I've hidden some information. So just imagine if you had run the search and all you saw on the page were these results with none, no other information, right? So it looks like these businesses are kind of relevant to what you've searched for from like the images and the categories, but it's not sort of like 100% confirmed from just the information that you can see. So that's actually where annotations come in handy, and we're gonna talk about that next. So annotations provide some additional information about a search result. These annotations could be of various types. As you can see in the screenshots over here, there's like quite a few in sort of the highlighted boxes. And these might provide relevance proof that the business is relevant to the user query. They might provide some unique information about the businesses, or they might have some personal appeal, like the one you can see for happy hour, which might be shown to you because we know you as a Yelp user like happy hour. And then one specific type of annotation that I want to talk more about is called review highlights. 
So these are spans or sentences of text pulled from business reviews. And these are then shown on search results to provide extra context about those search results. And oftentimes, you'll see that these review highlights have a bolded word or phrase, in this case, pizza, which proves that the search result is relevant to the search query. So now that we've seen a bit of what annotations are and seen a couple of examples, what makes a good annotation? So Yelp has two responsibilities here. We have a responsibility towards the business. We want to portray them accurately, right? But we also have a responsibility to the user. We want to provide them with the right information so that they can make their decision and like have a successful session on Yelp. So with that in mind, we have a prior, rough prioritization in our mind for the types of annotations that we would like to show. So first and foremost, we would like to show an annotation that confirms that the business is relevant to the search query that the user has run. Secondly, our other priority would be to show something interesting or unique about the business. So what sets the business apart from the other businesses on the page? And then finally, we might also show supplementary information about the business. This might not be something super interesting or unique about the business, but just something that we feel is necessary for this type of query, maybe. So these product principles that I just spoke about, they're baked into a service that we have called the annotator service. And given a business that is going to be shown on the SOAP, the annotator service is responsible for pulling in a bunch of information about that business and then building an exhaustive list of annotations that it could show for that business. And then it uses those three priorities or principles that I mentioned to choose the, the few essential annotations that it ends up showing on the SOAP for that result. So given all of uh, this context on the product principles and how the annotator service works, we can then revisit the Korean corn dogs example that we saw before. And now I've removed those like dark boxes that were hiding things. And you can see that both of the businesses that we've shown actually have these annotations on them that satisfy those product principles that we spoke about. So on each of the results, you can see that the first annotation that we've shown does indeed provide that relevance proof. It's showing that both of these businesses do serve Korean corn dogs. So many years ago, when we uh, kind of started thinking about annotations, we, as we were sort of building out our roadmap, the first step was starting with very fixed or structured annotations just built on the data that all of the businesses had. And those looked something like this first box over here. So we still have these types of annotations. You've seen them in some of the screenshots that I've already shown. But for the last couple of years, we've been more focused on uh, building more intelligence into our annotations. So one thing that that uh, sort of involves is leveraging more community content. And then another aspect of it is also being more aware of the user intent or like the query context. And that's going to be the focus for most of the rest of the presentation. And then finally, in our roadmap, we of course have a vision for the future in which we are always talking about continuously iterating. So. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about that future towards the end of the presentation. Cool. So before we can really dive into talking about LLM-powered annotations, I just want to give a brief overview of query understanding and how we use that to build LLM query expansions. So um, like we discussed before, there are certain priorities by which we decide which annotations are relevant, right? But in order to even know 
if an annotation is relevant or not. We really need to understand what users are looking for on Yelp in the first place. So when users land on Yelp search, they could have a variety of intents. So this is just like a quick snapshot of some of them, but you know, users might be searching for a specific category of businesses like dentists or a particular dish like mango sticky rice, a service like custom landscaping, or you know, they might have like more uh, sort of multi-word queries where either they're searching for like a broad uh, type of business, like things to do as a tourist in London, or they're going very specific, right? Like a restaurant for a wedding reception. And so we really need to think about each of these cases and understand uh, deeply what the user is looking for. So what exactly are query highlight expansions? So given a user intent or a user search query, we want to come up with a set of phrases such that a suggested phrase can be highlighted on the search result in order to prove its relevance to the user's search query. So what might this intuition look like? So for something like Starbucks, for example, pretty simple query, um, users might be interested in seeing the word Starbucks itself highlighted, but also they might be interested in seeing the categories of the business like cafes and breakfast or offerings from the business like coffee, tea, and muffins. These words might also be important to highlight, right? So that was a pretty easy example, but what about something a little more complicated like affordable hair salons? So extrapolating from what we spoke about for Starbucks already, obviously hair salon, haircut, blowout, and so on is important to highlight. But most importantly, the word affordable is key here, right? So when you look at the results for affordable hair salons, you're obviously going to see a bunch of hair salons and it's going to be pretty clear that these are hair salons, but the user is looking for affordable hair salons. And so the key word that we really care about highlighting here is affordable. And so, the most important thing would be affordable, cheap, value for money, or other synonyms like that. So based on that intuition, we developed LLM query highlight expansions. And going forward, I'll just call these LLM expansions. So these essentially expand the query into various related phrases or key concepts. So we started out with a pretty simple set of expansions, right? So you can see um, a couple of years ago what we had, uh, fairly simple. And then over months or years, we've iterated to sort of arrive at the expansion type that we have today, which is the one towards the bottom over here. And over iterations, one thing that was really important to us was reusability or modularity. So we really focused on being on developing expansions that could be uh, pluggable into various different use cases. So one thing that helps a lot with that is this tiered system that we have here. So uh, all of the, the suggested key concepts or relevant phrases are sort of ordered in tiers of relevance. So the first tier is very relevant, the second tier less relevant and so on. And this helps a lot with modularity. We can plug it into different use cases. In one use case, we might choose to use only uh, the first tier of relevance. In another, we might choose to use many and so on. Um, and yeah, if you wanna know a bit more about uh, LLM expansions and these iter iterations, they were actually discussed in a Haystack US talk earlier this year. and feel free to scan the QR code uh, if you're interested. I'll just wait on this for a couple of seconds. Cool. Um, okay, so now that we've seen what these LLM expansions look like, I'll talk a bit more about how we leverage them for annotations. So the first annotation that we're ta we'll talk about is one that we've already had a quick glimpse into which is review highlights. So this is a very high level overview of what the review highlights infrastructure looked like before we uh, started tweaking it. 
So when once uh, a business is chosen to be shown on the SOAP, the business is sent into the annotator service to fetch annotations. And if you remember, this is the service responsible for pulling in all of that data, right, to create the annotations. So as part of that, one of the annotations that it creates is review highlights. And it does this by constructing a review highlights query in which it tries to match against the user search query. So it uh, creates this review highlights query, sends it to the review search engine, which is uh, built on top of Lucene. And the best, best matching highlight, if it exists, is found and returned to the annotator service, where as long as it passes some quality checks, it can then be returned to show on the SERP. So as we were looking at this architecture and evaluating how to incorporate LLM, uh, LLM expansions into it, we noticed that there were also a few other shortcomings that our old system had. So we knew that we wanted to retain as much as the retrieval functionality as we could. And we realized that by incorporating expansions and also making some small tweaks, we could uh, use the backbone of our retrieval system, improve it, and arrive at something much more powerful. So I'm going to talk about those improvements now. So the first one is query understanding, which is mainly where the LLM expansions come into the picture. So as, uh, as I showed in the architecture diagram previously, we were only matching on the user search query text initially while fetching highlights. So after making this uh, improvement of incorporating LLM expansions, instead of matching just on the user search query, we try to match on any of the expanded phrases for that search query. So in the example of healthy food, if a user had searched for healthy food, previously we would have only fetched highlights that matched healthy food. Now we fetch highlights that match any of the 12 phrases listed over here. On average, uh, we have eight phrases per search query. So this has a few uh, interesting benefits. So the first benefit is that we see a lot more uh, diversity of highlights on the SERP. So it just looks a bit more interesting, right? Like you can see from all of these examples, if you saw them on a SERP, the SERP just looks a little more interesting than if you had highlights where healthy food was highlighted every single time. The other benefit is coverage. So you, uh, you might have some businesses that are shown on a SOAP for healthy food, but they don't have any queries. Sorry, they don't have any reviews that actually mention healthy food. And so previously, we wouldn't have been able to show a review highlight on these businesses. But now that we match on all of these new phrases, it's highly likely that one of those businesses has a mention for nutritious or organic or something. So in this way, we can show review highlights on more businesses by integrating LLM expansions. And then finally, we also see improvements in quality. So for example, if you think back to the affordable hair salons example, um, previously we would have tried to match on aff affordable hair salons or N grams of it. And so we might have occasionally matched on hair salons, whereas the optimal thing to do is actually to match on affordable or synonyms of affordable, which we would do now. So there are many cases like this where the search query itself is not, is not necessarily the exact best thing to match on, which LLM expansions helps with. And also just to add, we, we have LLM expansions stored for a huge set of queries that covers most of Yelp traffic, but for unseen queries that we don't have expansions for, we have a smart heuristic that, uh, that sort of understands what categories of businesses the user is looking for and uses the expansions of those categories to uh, fetch highlights and it works very well. So a benefit of using switching from search query text to LLM expansions 
is that it's very easy to slot this into our existing architecture without really needing an overhaul. You can see that basically it just replaces the query building phase with uh, the LLM expansions. So next we'll talk about another improvement that we made in our retrieval system. So our previous system was a bit inflexible in that it would only return one top highlights match from the review search engine. We updated this logic to start returning five matches instead to give us additional control over the type of highlight that we show. And we wanted this additional control because the retrieval and ranking that's done on the review search engine doesn't really capture all of the information or intuition that we would want it to. So intuitively, we care about uh, much more than just the highlighted phrase. We care about the recency of the review from which we're pulling the highlight. We care about how grammatically correct the sentence or the review highlight is. We also care about representing the business accurately. So for example, for a five-star business, we wouldn't want to fetch a really low rated review uh, for the review highlight and vice versa. So you can see, so I'm, I'm not sure if the coloring is super visible, but like this is red, green, green, red. Um, but basically you can see in some of these examples that even though each of these highlights uh, has a match for the same phrase, Korean corn dog, in the first pair, we would prefer the more recent one over the older one because it's just a much stronger signal of relevance proof to the user. And then in the second one, based on sort of the grammatical structure of the sentence, we would prefer the top one over the second one just because it's a much more coherent uh, thought. So to incorporate this intuition, we allow the review search engine to return top five matches to us. These top five matches are based on the uh, closeness, uh, the, the text match. And then we re-rank them basically based on additional features. And these additional features are just captured through very simple numerical functions. And we learned uh, simple weights to, uh, to calculate the final score. Again, similar to LLM expansions, you can see how this slots pretty easily into our existing architecture. All we had to do was start returning top five matches from the review search engine, which is a capability available to us. And then we just had to create a new small ranking module, which was fairly simple. And then another quick uh, benefit of uh, returning five candidates is that we now have the ability to filter inappropriate content without hurting the coverage of our review highlights. So this doesn't happen frequently, but it is of course possible that the review search engine will find a strong match for the text that we're looking for, but the, uh, the review highlight might be inappropriate to show on the SOAP for various reasons. Th there could be some inappropriate language in it, it could be very weirdly formatted, like you know, inconsistent capitalization, or there could be like addresses or phone numbers in it. So we wouldn't want to show any of these things on the SOAP, and we're able to just filter it out and show the next best candidate. And then the final set of improvements I want to talk about is related to handling text data. So we noticed some areas of improvement that fall under this text data umbrella, one of the pretty simple improvements was that the highlights previously that we had were clipped at word boundaries. And so they wouldn't necessarily always make sense as a coherent thought. So we made a pretty simple switch. The review search engine allows us to clip at sentence boundaries instead. So we just made that switch to have more coherent highlights. But another thing that we looked into was handling bad stemming. So just like quick background, I'm sure most folks are probably aware, but stemming is the process of reducing a word to its root or its stem. In this case, taking an example of active, 
all of the words active activity activities actively they would all stem to the same so you can imagine that if you were running a search for activities you wouldn't want to see highlights for the word active or actively because they mean something pretty different in this context but the review search engine doesn't really understand that context right so it uh, it can tend to return some uh, matches that don't really make sense all the time. And so we actually ended up deciding to maintain a hard-coded list of incorrect stemming, and we use that for filtering. So again, because we have five candidates returned to us, it's pretty easy for us to filter out a candidate if it has bad stemming, and we still have a match to fall back on. So... The result of all of the improvements that I've mentioned is a smarter retrieval flow that leverages LLM expansions, smart ranking or re-ranking, and uh, also leverages existing retrieval capabilities, all in order to provide much smarter and higher quality highlights than it was possible to return before, and with higher coverage than before. And yeah, just kind of a combination of all of the improvement architecture diagrams that I'd mentioned. This is what the final infrastructure looks like. So you can see it's super close to what we had before, just with a few improvements and tweaks in some places. And here is a quick example of the old highlights compared to the new highlights. I'm not sure how visible it is everywhere, but uh, you can see that in the old system, the sentences were kind of incomplete. They weren't necessarily full thoughts. And even though you could tell that the business did serve the dish you're looking for, it wasn't too clear what the sentiment was in the reviews that we pulled the highlights from. On the other hand, in the new system, you can see that each thought is a lot more complete and the sentiment is much more clear. So this just provides a much stronger relevance proof and like trust, I guess. Cool. So we've seen the power of small tweaks and LLM expansions in an existing annotation. And next I wanna talk about the power of using LLM expansions to build a new annotation. So uh, the guiding question for building this next annotation was, how can we provide relevance proof for low content or unreviewed businesses? Because the review highlights that we were talking about were very focused on businesses that have a lot of uh, you know, Yelp user-generated content right, in the form of reviews. So, some businesses provide Yelp with their website URLs and their website data, which allows us to make use of their website text. And this can be especially powerful for businesses that don't have a lot of content on Yelp yet. So you can imagine for this fake website that I made up, if someone had searched for like butter chicken or kadai chicken, I could very easily find a way to surface some data from their business website to prove to the user that this business is indeed relevant for their search query. So we have access to all of this website data, but it's just too much data for us to store on our, uh, on our search index or, you know, it's, it's too much for us to store for retrieval basically. So just looking at this again, like fake example of a paragraph on the side, you can tell that because of the presence of like HTML tags and a lot of stop words and maybe some words that just aren't useful for annotations or retrieval, there's a lot of unnecessary text basically that isn't useful for us on Yelp and isn't useful for us to show to users. So that brings us to the question of information synthesis, which is how do how best to store this data such that it retains its meaning uh, and still is high quality enough for us to use. So the answer again is LLM expansions. 
So what we do is we create a resource of phrases that we care about or phrases that we want to match on. And this resource is basically um, a bunch of top historical search queries, let's say from the last few years. And for each of those search queries, we, uh, we also pull in all of the LLM expansions for those queries. So that whole set of phrases is going to be our phrase data set. And that's the full set of phrases that we want to match on. So what we do is we can safely look for these phrases in the businesses' websites. And then for each business, we end up storing a map of phrases to the number of times that they're mentioned on the business website. So any of the other text from the website is not something we care about. So now that we have all of that data uh, stored, we can then expose it in order to build annotations. So the per, the per business phrase count data set is stored on some in, in some data storage that's exposed through a content endpoint. And then again, we have the annotator service, which is able to call the content endpoint to fetch these phrases. So the structure is very, very similar to what we saw for review highlights. Essentially, a business query is sent to the annotator service. The annotator service looks up the phrases, the LLM expansions for the search query, and then it fetches the mentions for each of those phrases for this particular business and constructs an annotation using the most relevant phrase that's mentioned on the business's website. So finally, here are some examples of what these annotations look like. Um, yeah, not, again, sorry, not sure if every single thing is visible at the back, but you can see that because we've used LLM expansions to, uh, to generate the or to mine the data, as well as to fetch the annotations, in some cases, the annotation shown matches the search query text exactly, such as for nutrition plan. But in some other cases, you can see that the annotation is either like a synonym of the search query text or a phrase that's kind of related to the search query text. So here again, we can see the power of those LLM expansions coming through to provide more coverage basically uh, in these annotations. And you can also see that these annotations are showing up on businesses that are pretty low content. So they have you know, five reviews or less. So again, we're providing some sort of strong relevance proof for businesses that we don't have too much data about. Cool, so now that we've spoken about uh, some of the uses of LLMs in our current annotations, I just wanna think to talk a bit about how we're thinking about this problem going forward and the kinds of iterations and improvements that we want to make. So we're super interested in the reusability of existing signals uh, in a similar way to how we've captured information from the business's websites. We've also actually used the exact same approach to capture information from the business's menus, reviews, photo captions, and so on. So all of this was Yelp content, but we've sort of summarized it in this way. And then we plan to use these signals to generate very similar annotations to website mentions, such as on the menu or X number of reviews mention a certain phrase. And then also just want to call out that our website mention signal is also reusable for non-annotations use cases such as retrieval. And then we were also thinking about how to actually use LLMs directly in highlight selection. So, you know, in, in all of the stuff that I spoke about previously, we're kind of using LLMs indirectly, right? In using LLM expansions, but then using more traditional retrieval methods. So we're thinking about how we can use LLMs directly and you know, you can imagine a very simple case of uh, an LLM takes a business and the search query and 
all of the recent reviews of the business and decides which span of text from those recent reviews should be shown to the user and which part of it should be bolded, right? So it's kind of like choosing the review highlight completely for the business. And something like this could be very useful for more generic searches like restaurants or food where the relevance of the businesses is quite obvious just at a glance. And so the kinds of things that we want, might want to highlight in review highlights is um, something interesting, like the place was memorable, right? Or something that's not directly a synonym of the search query, basically. And then finally, LLMs could also select, uh, could also generate an annotation directly for the business instead of sort of selecting from the selecting from the existing business data it could be the one to generate the annotation so given the context of a search query as well as all of the search results on the page an llm could decide what makes each business on the page relevant and appealing and then generate an annotation to show so this could look something like this, where an LLM decides that the for, for the first result, what makes it unique and different from the other results is that their specialty is Korean corn dogs. Whereas for the second business, what sets it apart from the other businesses on the page is that they have sort of beginner friendly half and half options. So this is just an example, but it could also be useful for those generic type of queries like restaurants and food again. Cool. So the last thing that I want to talk about is another way that we've leveraged the annotator service. So everyone's probably very familiar with the word, the you know acronym RAG, but yeah, just uh, to reiterate, RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, and it's the approach of optimizing the output of an LLM by providing it with some external data source or some knowledge base. And Yelp has a lot of data. And you can imagine that for Yelp-specific use cases, it might be helpful to have Yelp-specific information provided to an LLM, right? So something that you might have also noticed by now is that the annotator service essentially features as a fact-finding service for a business, right? So given a business, you're essentially fetching all of this information about it and then returning just the top information. So there were various teams at Yelp that started to notice this and approached us asking whether we would expose the annotator service for RAG. And we ended up creating a RAG-specific endpoint to satisfy that demand. So the way that it works is the new endpoint takes a business ID or set of business IDs and optionally takes a search query term. And then it returns a bunch of information relevant to that business. So recent reviews of the business, uh, properties of the business, features of the business, um, praise, praise mention counts from like websites, photo captions, and so on. And then it also, if a search query text had been passed in, then it also returns a phrase a review highlights relevant to that search query text. And then the way that this might be used for a Yelp product, there could be a Q&A product on the business, at the business level, for example. So a user might be able to ask the Q&A product a question about a business, such as, does McDonald's in Berlin have vegan options or something, right? So then the Q&A product extracts something from that query, which is like McDonald's Berlin and the word vegan, right? And it sends it over to the annotator service. The annotator service pulls a lot of information about McDonald's Berlin. And it also looks up in the reviews for uh, review highlights that match the word vegan. And then it consolidates all of this information sends it back to the Q&A product, and then the Q&A product uses all of this information, adds it to the LLM prompt, and then gets an answer to send back to the user. So currently, the annotator service for RAG is only used at internally. 
but hopefully there might be some external use cases soon. Cool. So that was everything I wanted to talk about. Just some quick takeaways to sort of uh, unify you know, everything that I've spoken about. I think one of the big things that we care about and were really interested in while designing all of these things is reusability and repurposing. We were really interested in designing LLM signals that could be reused wherever possible. So you've seen that the LLM expansions that I spoke about were um, reused in review highlights, but also in website mentions for both uh, synthesizing the data and also for generating the annotations. And then, you know, even when it comes to the annotator service, we use it for you know, its traditional uh, purpose for annotating businesses on the SOAP, but we also reused it for RAG. So we're really interested in yeah, using things for various purposes. Also, um, we're always uh, careful to find the right balance between sort of LLM strategies and you know, more legacy strategies, I guess. So, in the review highlights example, you could see that we used LLM expansions in some places, but in other places, we kind of took a step back and just used manual tweaks or small changes and got a lot of value out of it, right? And then finally, yeah, just uh, wanted to stress that we're always interested in continuous iteration. And so we, yeah, have various other plans in mind for review highlights and annotations in general, and we want to continue seeing how we can use LLMs and other strategies in them. And yeah, that's all I had. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. So we have time for a few questions, and I want to start off with uh, questions from the online audience. Uh, the first couple of questions is around uh, the LLM expansion itself. Um, Jack Veer asks, um, how did you balance the LLM expansion with any drop in precision? For example, falafel might be fresh, but not necessarily healthy. Um, and re maybe related to this question from Ujmal, uh, also, how do you assess the quality of LLM expansions? What are the metrics to track? Yeah, so um, in, in terms of precision, um... So can you repeat the precision sure. question? So how do you balance the LLM expansions with any drop in precision? So recall there's precision more or less in LLM expansions. And then what are the metrics to, to track? Yeah, I mean, I, I think like one major thing is we went through a lot of iterations of our LLM expansions. So uh, I'm not claiming that we like got it right the first time, right? So we had a lot, we, I think we ran like four or five experiments on different sets of LLM expansions where we recognized that each uh, stage had certain shortcomings. Like in some stages we were expanding too much, right? So then running into the issue of having too many phrases and then recalling lower quality uh, highlights some of the times. So we were pretty careful to do a lot of manual evaluation like we have internal tools that allow us to simulate a lot of searches and see what the review highlights, see what the annotations would look like. So there was a lot of manual evaluation, a lot of involvement from product in sort of helping us evaluate those things. So that's uh, primarily how we assessed uh, things like quality because, yeah, I mean, the scale of this product is pretty huge. It's pretty hard for us to um yeah kind of do quality evaluations at a large enough scale to cover every single possible search query so it's more of a manual effort also looking at search metrics various search metrics and trying to decipher the way that why they're moving the way they're moving um but yeah just went through a lot of iterations okay thanks any question from the floor uh last hand back there Yeah, so thanks for the talk. Uh, I have one question on the uh, using LLMs for 
term expansion so in your iteration of experiments like on which model which one to use for term expansion so did you consider using uh, machine learning models which are which are like which are trained to do this expansion for example we have lexical sparse expansion models like splayed or uh, like open search has few things did you consider any of these options like in your experimentations like of doing the term expansion other than llms um yeah i think that's a really good question i can get back to you on an answer so i mean yeah i i guess like what i didn't mention is uh everything involved in this is obviously the result of a huge team's work not just mine and so there was a different engineer who worked on the actual llm expansions so i'm happy to check on that and get back to you there was another hand up here somewhere Thanks for the talk. Um, quick question. Are these expansions personalized? So can you have a different highlights for different users or are they tied to the query and the business itself? Like, do you have different highlights or not? Yeah, the highlights right now are not personalized. So the LLM expansions are the same across uh, all users. Uh, actually, we, well, I mean, a lot of Yelp users aren't always logged in. Um, a lot of our sessions come from via like Google, right? So a lot of times, yeah, uh, we don't have enough user information to make a judgment call. We of course do have a lot of logged in users, a lot of um, opportunities for personalization, but for the first few stages, it didn't seem worth the investment of, yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm afraid we're out of time, but I think you'll be, you'll be around and uh, be open for questions. And also thanks to the online audience for your questions. Uh, just a quick break. Uh, don't run away. So we just changed the setup here. Another round of applause, sorry. <laughs>